Hey everybody, it's been a while, but it's time for another episode of Analog. So today on Analog, instead of talking about a board game, I'm actually going to talk to you about one of my all-time favorite things on the planet, role-playing games. Today, we're talking about Tales from the Loop. Tales from the Loop is an RPG based on the artwork and stories of Simon Stalenhog, set in an alternate 1980s universe where technology has progressed a little bit for the government, but not for most of the citizens. For them, it's pretty much still the same 1980s, but there are all kinds of futuristic machines and weird creatures and stuff like that that are dotting the landscape. Your job in the game is to play a well, battle-ready breakfast club that's out to figure out the mystery of these strange particle accelerators called the loop. In the 1950s, scientists discovered what's called the magnetrine effect, which allows these giant transport ships called Gauss trucks uh, to be able to travel these magnetic rails that are spread throughout the hemisphere. Uh, this spawned the building of a giant particle accelerator in Nevada, and then later, in the 1960s, it built another one in Sweden. And these, which are referred to as the loops, are where kind of generate all this mystery and stuff comes from. Anything from like strange machines, weird transports, spatial anomalies, all have been reported from the loops, but most people, as in true 1980s movies, kind of ignore it or don't see it and things like that. In the game itself, you take on the role of a teenager living in the 1980s. You can either have it take place in Nevada, you can have it take place in Sweden, or you can have it take place ultimately wherever you want. It's a role-playing game. It's a pretty open system, so you can do whatever. Uh, your age ranges from 10 to 15, and the whole game feels like E.T. and the Goonies and Stranger Things combined. So you get kind of that like fun adventure stuff of a lot of those 1980s Stand By Me movies, and you get all the like spooky atmospheric stuff of like Stranger Things and stuff. Each class that you get to play is based off of an archetype from a 1980s movie. So you have like the jock, the bookworm, the rocker, the popular kid, you know, all kinds of different things like that. And each character, you know, kind of comes together to form like your own kind of ragtag group of kids. The whole idea is that you have a bunch of different kinds. So it's not just like all popular kids or something like that. And the character building is super duper quick and easy to follow and by the time you're done with like the 15 minute character building session that you have not only do you have this you know quickly done kid character but you also have different relationships to all the other kids in the party and you have relationships to npcs so that by the time you've actually built things you're adding little nuances to the universe and building it together with the dm you also get to pick your favorite 1980s song as part of the character creation, which is super duper important because you have to choose one that best reflects your character. I, I chose uh, Take On Me by AHA for this one. My original pick was On the Radio by Donna Summer. I'm actually playing in a game of this right now that's taking place in uh, like the coast of Oregon, which is kind of neat, but it's set in 1980, not the 1980s like the rest of this is set in. It's set in just in 1980, so you can only pick songs from the 1980, which kind of sucks because that rules out the rest of the 80s. The other cool thing is that every character gets like an iconic item that between mysteries, you lose all the other stuff that you have. So like the whole idea is that if you play a character that lasts for more than one mystery, you still have that like one item that's like your thing. Like if you're the computer geek, you might have like your personal easy to transport 1980s computer or like a pocket calculator or something. This guy right here, who's my character, he's playing the hick type. It's the actual name of the thing. I'm not making fun of anybody. And they're good with like tinkering and stuff like that. So his iconic item is a wrench. So, you know, whenever I use that to like take something apart or hit somebody, I get to add extra die to it because it's my iconic item and nothing can ever happen to your iconic item. So if you want to be like that kid that has a dog with them, but you're one of those people that would be like, oh, I would feel terrible if something ever happened to the dog. Nothing bad can happen to it because it's your iconic item and it's always going to survive. So if you want to have like Mr. Fluffers, my constant companion, you totally can, which is pretty neat. The actual like mechanic of the game, the actual like nitty gritty playing of it is pretty simple and it's based on the year zero engine. So for those of you out there that have no idea what the year zero engine is, I'm going to give you a quick little rundown of how it works. So basically what you do is the situation is presented to you by the GM or DM, whatever you want to call it. They're both the same person. You decide what attribute that you're going to be using here. And that has a number next to it. And that starts building your dice. And then if you have any skills that are associated with whatever challenge that you're trying to accomplish, you add whatever number that is next to the skill. 
you roll your die and you hope for a six. And if you get a six, that means you succeed. Any subsequent sixes that you get after that, you can use to add effects to the situation, some of which are listed underneath the skills and some of which you can do like more cinematic things with to make it kind of more fun and interesting. It's it's a very collaborative, even in the battle ex part of it, it's a very collaborative experience between you and the GM, which is super duper fun. Hit points are more kind of just like, you know, based off of your body stat and stuff like that, which like the higher body stat you have, the more punishment you can take and stuff like that. Your characters can't die in this game. So every time you get hit or something happens to you, you gain a condition, which is either upset, scared, exhausted, injured, or broken. And when you get to the point that you're broken, your character just kind of like shuts down and you're like beaten up to a point that you can't function anymore. And you have to then retreat, find your NPC that's your anchor point that can help you heal and remove these conditions. So like the kids can get bruised up and things like that, but there's no actual like you're bleeding profusely and about to die kind of hit point style. Um, it's more like you're scared, you're injured, you're exhausted, like you have all these conditions on top of you. And every condition also subtracts from your dice rolls. So like the more conditions that you take on, the tougher it is to meet those challenges and stuff because they're pulling away from your precious, precious pool. Every character has a drive, a problem, uh, pride, and um, like an overall objective that they're trying to do in the game. Every episode or every session that you spend that you're able to achieve whatever your drive is or if you're like, hey, I'm dealing with my problem that came up during this session and I'm gonna work, I worked on it or you know, I did something good with an NPC that's, that's related to me and things like that, you get experience points. And if you can achieve all these objectives in one session, you can get up to five XP. Then you can use that to raise up your skills and everything like that. Every time you wanna bring a skill point up, it costs five experience points, and you can only have 10 experience points held onto in your reserve. So like you have to spend them after a couple of sessions. You can't just like wait and then power level later, which is pretty cool. Um, you also have luck points. The younger you are, the more luck you have, but the less attributes you have to work with. And the older you are, you have way more physical attributes to work with but you're not as lucky because you're a teenager and everything sucks for you. Luck points can be used to reroll dice when they fail for you. So it's kind of advantageous. You can be a 10 year old that has no stats, but you can just constantly be rolling, re-rolling stuff and having the lucky thing happen to you because you're like the kid that just manages to slip out of it. Or you can be a huge jock 15 year old that has no luck in the world, but can take a million hits because you know, you're a big dumb doofus that plays hockey. That's the the, the picture of the jock that they have in here is, is of a hockey player, so. Very quick and easy to follow. Not a lot of math involved, not a lot of heavy numbers. Very heavy on the actual store playing story playing part of it. The book itself contains everything that you need to be able to run or play the game. Aside from the character information, it also has, uh, oh God, it's got the history of everything leading up to the 1980s in here. It's got the whole history of all the loop and everything in it. It's got, uh, information about NPCs. It's got map locations for both the Nevada-based loop and the Sweden-based loop. And it also has a pre-made campaign that actually spans over four bigger adventures called the Four Seasons of Mad Science, which is actually focuses on all the robots and dinosaurs and you know fun adventures that the kids can go on in this game. So pretty much everything that you need all contained in one book. You don't need to buy a bunch of supplements and stuff to be able to enjoy it, which is really, really great. Um, you don't even need like a battle map or anything to play on. Combat is very just communicating with each other. So it doesn't take a lot to actually get into this game, which is great. If you love the 80s or movies from that era, role-playing or Stranger Things and are getting hyped for it coming out in October, this is a great way to get a group of your friends together and kind of get them into it and stuff. The beauty part about this game is that you don't have to have role-playing experience to be able to sit down and enjoy it. So it's great for first-timers. It's great for experienced players. It's a lot of fun in general. It's been slated to be the RPG of 2017. So. I know that might not mean a lot to some of you, but it means a lot to people like me that are super into role-playing games. There are gonna be links to Drive Through RPG. That's the only place you can get Tales from the Loop right now. They're currently out of print of the actual book version, but you can get it for pretty cheap as a PDF online. Uh, we also are gonna have some links in the comments to um, Stalin Hags, Stalin Hogs. I'm sorry, I'm really terrible at pronouncing. Stalin Hogs. We're gonna have links down to Stalin Hogs artwork and books as well. So you can check out some stuff and see his cool repertoire. Like he makes a lot of really amazing stuff. Don't forget to buy a t-shirt from our store while you're looking around and shopping. And uh, you know, we got this and all kinds of other cool swag there. Let us know what you think about this in the comments. Let us know if this is a game that you would be interested in running with your friends and things like that. Also, let us know what song from the 80s you would pick if you were building a character we wanna know.